Welcome to the Growing Your Financial Business, The Woman's Way podcast. I'm Robin Crane, and I was a financial advisor for over a decade. But before that, I was a singer-songwriter. And now, even as a mom of three with a teenager, toddler, and a baby, I run a seven-figure business helping women in financial services grow their businesses and make a bigger impact. In this podcast, I'll bring you financial advisors, industry influencers, and highly successful entrepreneurs to give you innovative strategies designed for women. So get ready to learn how to get in front of the right people, get more ideal clients, and be able to grow your ideal business so you can live your ideal life. Welcome, welcome. I have here Christine Tay from Tay Financial Coaching. And Christine is a financial coach, and she deals more with the relationship around money and also has a background as a tax professional. Um, so she really takes the practical and the, the emotional behavioral piece of money and puts it together to help clients um, to reach their financial goals. And today we want to talk about how to attract more money into your business and your life, because even as a financial professional or, or an insurance professional, I'm guessing you still want to attract that money and not just using strategy, 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 but also getting in the right mindset to make sure to kind of be in the receiving mode to have that. So um, tell me a little bit, Christine, about your background and, and how you even got into this, because it's kind of crazy to be on the tax side. It's very much very practical, right? And then you're also very open, I know, um, to law of attraction and that sort of thing. So give us your background. Yeah, yeah. So I was... Um... Um, I major in computer science. So that was my undergrad degree. So I'll just give a high level. I won't go into too much detail. So my first um, job was really a data analyst. I was doing that for probably a decade. And then, so, you know, you, you came to a point where in like, you feel like, okay, corporate America isn't really where you want to be. I've always been, wanted to be an entrepreneur. So then I hired a life coach, you know, I think 2015, 2016, then it got me to start thinking because I was not happy in corporate America. You, I'm sure some of you can relate to this like you go to work like all you hear on Monday in the elevator they ask you oh, how was your weekend they always say oh it was good you know just taking care of things getting ready for the weekday and I can't wait for Friday it was it's a little depressing and I and then sad to say I was also feeling the same way so it's like I didn't want to live the rest of my life like that I just don't see myself in corporate America like there's just too much you know climbing to the ladder and the politics I just hate having to answer to a boss. So I start, I always admire my coaches that, um, you know, who run their own business. So I started thinking about that. And then my life coach, you know, saw that I was really good with budgeting, with finance, personal finance. And I love personal finance. I love talking about money, personal finance money, not, not business uh, side. So basically um, I started um, doing coaching for my friends that just for free. So in return, like if they like my, um, what I do, all I ask from them is to write me a review. So I did it for friends and family and then so i think i got enough reviews right on yelp so i used to live in the bay area so yelp um everybody always look on Yelp for everything. So once I, I, I established a few reviews there, someone found me, actually he found me on my website, not from Yelp because he's from the East Coast. So I was actually really surprised. I'm like, wow, it reached all the way to East Coast. So he was actually my first ever paying client. So this month is actually my first five year anniversary because I got paid the first time September, 2016. So so then um, fast forward, I think um, then um, what I did was that I wanted to just stay in uh, working, but then I wasn't happy. So I tried switching career from data analytics to to um, finance. So I, w- I went to the uh, FP&A uh, department, this financial planning and analysis uh, department. So then I switched over. I was really happy. Everything was new. I love learning new things. It was budgeting. and But then it wasn't. It just felt different because then you don't really make a difference because uh, I was working at Visa. It was a billion dollar company. Like what difference can you make? You know, you're just one tiny person, a senior financial analyst and, and you know, in the big company. So then I was at, and then, and then I love my boss. I stayed there and then, but then he, he changed, he switched jobs and then he changed, he went to another company. So that was the time that I got, I got moved to different bosses in like a year. I probably had two, three bosses. And I was like, I didn't want to do this anymore. I have no control over that. So that's what got me started to actually quitting my job. So then like um, it took me about a month or two months to to finally quit because then I was terrified. I've never been an entrepreneur on my own. I, was, I wasn't making enough yet on my business to be able to sustain it uh, full time. So there was a lot of fear there. You know, I'm like, oh, can I make enough money? I was writing everything. I need to have 10 clients, blah, blah, blah to be able to sustain. I need to make six digits again, blah, because I was in the Bay Area. Most people, you know, if you live in tech company, you're making six digits. So it's like, it was hard. It's like, oh my God, can I make six digits already? So I was like, 
there's so much fear. So I talked to a lot of people from entrepreneurs to this. So I got many different opinion, but in the day it's your opinion of yourself. But what really changed for me was actually I read this book as and it is given. So basically it's about the law of attraction and like I shifted my yeah. yeah. I shifted my relationship with 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 the how to think about the business because I was so focused on the number, number, I need to get this much, whatever. So then I shifted. It was also someone also talked to me about this, like focus on the service you provide, focus that you're gonna help people, not on like the dollar amount and focus on abundance. So so I'm just I was trying to figure out different models because I know I didn't want to go to financial advisory because then I didn't want to. In manage investments. And I know a lot of you know financial advisors, they make money from you know accumulating all those assets, wealth to grow. So I and then and to them they're like, oh, how can I make money if I don't manage any investments? So for me it's, it's different. So my my business is 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 profitable based on how many new clients I get every single month. So like if you think about it that way, then maybe there might be months I might not have any new clients, right? But then like when I shifted my perspective, I was thinking for me to be profitable, like I only need like, you know, like a couple of clients, really a handful of clients, maybe even five clients. Now, like I moved to Vegas. I used to live in Silicon Valley. I intentionally moved to Las Vegas. So my cost of living will be lower. I have a brand new house now with mortgage so low. So my cost of living really went down. So probably now I probably only need two, two paying new clients a month. So if you think about how sustainable is that, I've, I've always had you know, a lot of cl- more clients that I needed every single month. So if you look at population, you know, it's like, there's just too many people. So you have to link with uh, that abundance mindset. So with that, like I, I look at it like how many clients I really need. So it's like there's not really much and there's just so many people in this world. So when I shifted then also from a service standpoint, also reading that book, like it just changed. So so um, when my last day, my first month on my own was May 2019. So I quit my job that month. And then like the, the month after it was June, like, I was actually profitable. I signed up like 10 new clients that month. So it was like, it, it just, it was, I don't know what shifted. It was like energetically your relationship, the way you think, like you're just being feeling free, not feeling from a place like, oh my God, I need like this 10 clients. I need to make five digits. I need to make six digits. So if you shift differently, your energy just shift. And then like, they just came in. So I was just really surprised. Like, I was just profitable. So since May 2019 till now, I've been profitable ever since, except for one month. There's one month I was not profitable, but that was about it. So when I say profitable, I know people say, what's your definition of profitable? Because usually for people, it's like your, your income minus your business expense. So for me, like everything goes to my 1040. I mean, I have to pay myself, right? So it's like pretty much your income from the business minus your personal and business expense. That's my definition of profitable. So I have been profitable since I quit except for that one month. So I've been awesome. pretty blessed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, wow, it's so cool. So yeah. So, so I love, I love Abraham Hicks. And if you mm-hmm. are listening now to this podcast yep. and you haven't heard Abraham Hicks, it's phenomenal. And, and as you mentioned, ask, and it is given great book and just, just so, so good about law of attraction and, and just focusing on, like you said, Christine abundance. And I think the money math makes sense, like knowing how many clients you need, but not in a stressed out way. Like if, as one of the things Abraham Hicks says is like, if there's resistance, if there's mm-hmm. resistance to it, then um, then you won't attract it. And um, I'll give you an example of this actually. And for the listeners is um, we, we had trouble getting pregnant with uh, our, our son. It took us about five years that we were trying to get pregnant. And at that time we first started with try, like deciding whether we we're going to do IVF or not. It was a lot to do. Like I had a lot of scarcity around the money, you know, and I, at that time yep. when this was, you know, years ago, when we're thinking of it. And I, I remember crying in this parking lot, like sitting next to my, my husband in the car going like, we can't do IVF. Like we don't have the money. We don't have the money. I can't do it. And I was like crying. Cause already we were struggling in our businesses and then we were supposed to, you know, already in debt. And then we we're supposed to put all this money up to, to make a baby. Yep. Yeah. Um, and my husband said to me, he said, I will not let money get in the way of us creating the family that we want. And he is very adamant about that. And we did do IVF that year and we did not get pregnant. Um, and then we tried a bunch of other things and years and years go by and the business starts to take off all these things. Like it takes off, like as if it happens on its own, but like, finally, you know, I started to make money in the business and do very well. And then we decided to do IVF again and money wasn't an issue, but then time was an issue. Uh Um, and long story short of that is that we did get pregnant with my son Maverick. 
but there was, there were all these things. It was like first money and then it was time. And there was, there was some resistance. And we did like, I, I kept getting better and better at the law of attraction and, and better and better at manifesting what I wanted. And then we decided actually on my birthday, you're using dates. So I'll use dates, but May 27th is my birthday. And we decided mm-hmm. um, now this was what I guess it was two years ago in May that we wanted to get pregnant again. Yeah. And now I've done all this stuff, law of attraction and much more and manifesting and much more with, um, you know, just not having resistance. And we assumed we'd probably have to do IVF. And so we were, we went to the doctor, we started this whole process. I was actually still breastfeeding my son. So I had to stop that. And then, um, but I was going to acupuncture. I was going to chiropractor. I was meditating, just all these things, just very much in alignment. And, um, we actually went to Hawaii, uh, in July and came back. I had a, a, one of my femme events. I, and I was late for my period. And I, after, you know, a couple of days, few days, I was late. I found out that I was pregnant with my daughter and it was really interesting to see the difference of there was a lot of struggle, struggle, struggle with trying to get pregnant the first time and IVF. And there's so much, that was not a financial thing, but it was a financial thing because before we had my son, I mean, it was so much scarcity around how to get pregnant and how are we going to do this and all the money and the business and like all the stress around it. And then Mm -hmm. when it came to my daughter, um, who's now uh, uh, almost a year and a half, it was like, oh, okay. Like we just... I just put the energy out there and I had no resistance. I'm like, if I have to do IVF, I have to do IVF. If I have to take the time, I'm going to take the time. Like I can find the time for my family. And it was so much less resistance and then got pregnant. So um, I think it's the same with business as it is in life. It's like mm-hmm. the more we assume is happening and the more we focus on abundance and the more we put positive yep. energy towards yep. that as, as foo-foo or airy fairy, as it sounds, um, it definitely yeah. works. No, it, it's true. Yep. Yep. So how do you help your clients with this when it comes to money specifically that might also help um, the advisors and, and insurance professionals listening? Yeah. So, um, so a lot of my clients who has problems attracting my who have debt issues or like they have, you know, they just have credit card debt or negative cash flow every month is because really about their relationship with money. So as, as weird as this may sound, you know, it is a relationship with money. Like, like the first thing, if I ask you, okay, how is your relationship with money? So what's the first thing that comes to your mind? If you can't say, oh, it's good. Like, I, mean, I think we have a good relationship, awesome. good back we're and like, forth. We're yeah. totally in love. Me and money, we're like super <laughs> in love. Like, yeah, because, I, yeah. I used to talk about money as a relationship. And actually, I used to work with a lot of couples. So I had this thing called the money menage a trois. And it was about your money, you, your money, and your honey. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like how yeah. Was- you're in a relationship with your money and then you're in a relationship with your honey and it's this menage a trois, this threesome, yeah. right? Yeah. And so you have to make sure that you're in a good relationship with both um, or you'll have some challenges, but keep going. That's good. That's good. Yep. yep. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Because then I just ask yourself, if you can't say, oh, it's awesome. It's even just say it's good. Then there's some work to be done there because it starts with that one because you can make a lot of money. But if you don't feel you deserve it, like like I have a client, like she was uh, when she started working with me, she she had a lot of debt and you know whatever. So after working with me for about a year, like she got out of a credit card debt, her budget, she's always on positive cash flow. But then like it seems like she was starting to save money, like ten thousand. It was almost reaching twenty thousand. So it's like then you know we we're also saving for retirement and investing, right? But then she she was like starting to feel like. Wow, like she couldn't believe she has like 20 grand. So she was starting to get back into her pre, uh, you know, her her habit before me. Like, it's like, oh, like thinking, oh, where am I going to spend this money on? So she doesn't feel that she deserved to have a lot of money save up. Like, it's like, it's like, it has to go. Like, and then I also have another client, like, she's like, you know, she doesn't, she doesn't feel like, you know, like money scares her. Like it's like, oh, like I have like, what am I going to do with the money? So, so she just inadvertently unconsciously just want to give it away. And then she end up just charging or give it to family, friends. Like she just want to, she just don't want to, don't want to have it in her account. So, so that just shows there's just some unhealthy relationship there with money because then, and, and the funny thing is that like, you know, it's not like when I say, um, you know, when I tell my class, I love money, money loves me a mantra, like some religious people tend to get offended by that because they then, you know, I did a quote post on LinkedIn one time I was saying that. And then like, I had some, you know, 90%, it was all good. 95%, there were just some few people who were saying, who was quoting me this Bible quote, like money is the root of all evil. I'm like, no, I didn't. 
I, it's like money is not the root of all evil. It's a person. If you're, I, I truly believe if you're a good person, like you are already a generous person to be to begin with. If more, you have more money, what does that mean? You're gonna become more generous. A greedy person, it just it just brings up more of who you are. Because money is really just a tool. So if you know who you are, for me, I have a lot of money, millions of money. Like, you know, I'm not going to hoard it and I want to make more. Because like that's why when people ask me, like, how do you want to grow your business? I'm like, I'm pretty happy with my business. Growing to me is that sustaining this, I'm um, being just keep being able to help more people. It's not about growing, having more, like training more coaches, like more people, more clients, because that's just too much for me. I want to be able to be sustainable. I love my one-on-one work. I actually don't really have a group coaching because then, uh, you know, personal finance is personal. So then, you know, I have clients who cry in front of me because then you're dealing with, a lot of them are really like, you know, they have such bad relationship with money that it's just that they just, it's just hard. So we have to really dig the deep through that. So it's really to just one-on-one work that I can, you know, because like you can teach them as much as budgeting, like budgeting at the, I mean, it's pretty simple, right? It's just pluses and minuses. You just have to earn more than you spend. So in the simplest way, it is simple, but it's not just that simple. There's just a lot of emotional stuff underneath that. Like what's making you spend more money? Like usually like, you know, what is making you shop more? And then a lot of it, like I, I see the trend with some of my clients, like they want to spend more money because then, you know, they're trying to fill a void inside. You know, I mean, yes, you can fill a part of that void with materials, but then it's like, if it's just too much on that, it's causing you financial problems and you're just digging yourself into the bigger hole, you know? So, so you have to like, what's going on inside of you? Like, what void are you trying to fill? You know, so then, then I ask them a lot of questions like, oh, okay, then, then, you know, they work through that. Like self-care is very important through our work together. Like, you know, I also, it's almost like a life coaching, financial coaching. Like, you know, they, they need to take care of themselves, what makes them happy, you know, like they need to have some hobbies, self-care, like, you know, meditation, like journaling, because like when they're stressed, then they tend to not pay attention to their budget. They just want to spend, spend, spend too. So everything is all connected. That's why I look at everything holistically. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Is there any specific exercise that you can walk through that would help them if they feel like they do have some money blocks or feel like there's something holding them back and they know because they spend like, like it, you know, the second they make money, they spend it, or maybe they're the opposite. And I have these money types and one of those money types is spent through Sally and spent through Sally loves to spend, 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 and especially justifies the expenses or to fill an emotional need versus cheap chip who does not like to spend and cheap chip likes to make sure oh, yes. afford the money. Yes. Um, and that we have delusional Dan and um, yeah, there's Voider yeah. Al who avoids, and then there's uh, over generous Olivia who just gives. Right. So, so yeah. that's in my book, mind yeah. money management, but um, those like, those patterns that we run affects yeah. our business also affects our, our financial state. Is there anything like that you can do that you can walk them through right now that might help them recognize those patterns and maybe stop those patterns? Yeah, I think it, it all boils down to self-awareness, you know, day to day, moment by moment. Cause like, I really believe that you have to always live a life, you know, consciously. You know, like, why do you do the way you do? I mean, I'm not saying you drive yourself crazy questioning everything, but it's like just being aware of like why you do certain things. So it's like when it comes to money, I always tell my clients, you know, like journal through your feelings with money. Like, for example, when you're buying something or like, you know, what is making you buy certain things? Like it has to come from a place like, you know, you love it. You cannot, you cannot be like, okay, do you feel guilty then? Why do you feel guilty? So journal about that. And sometimes if they have a hard time like figuring that out, of course they talk to me, but I want them to be aware of it. You know, like, like, um, I, I funny when you told me like they're hoarders. So I just have a client, he's like, he's a uh, 65. So, and then I asked him, so in your family, how, how old does your, you know, parents or grandparents, well, no, your grandparents live. They just say, oh, they, they don't live that long, maybe 80 years old. So you have about 15 more years to go. And then he has a net worth about $7 million. And then he told me he can't afford going, going traveling. And I'm like, do you see your net worth, the spreadsheet? Like, and then you're telling me, like, how, how do you think a third person? And then like, I think we had to work several times again. And finally he said, like, he, it was like, he needed me to give him permission to do that. I'm like, you're fine. Even though like you just divide that, you need to treat yourself. Like he was being frugal. Like he was just afraid of losing money. And then he doesn't think he's worth the investment. So like when he has, he doesn't like to have so much cash. He just like to invest, invest. He did. And I said, well, if you live it in cash, you, you spend on yourself. Don't you think you are a good investment 
for you to be happy. When I pointed that way, he's like, oh, I never thought of it that way. Like he was just so afraid to allow money in cash. He thinks it has to grow, grow. It's like, well, you invest in yourself, make you happy. Do you think that's a worthy investment? And then that really clicked in him. And then like, and then he emailed me that day and then he even wrote me a review because he was just so happy. He's like, yeah, Christina, I even treated my two friends out to a nice restaurant and it felt good. <laughs> it's like, because he has a lot of like, you know, he has a lot of money to spend, really. I mean, you have 50 more years to go. You have no kids. Like it's time for you to enjoy your life. But it was like, he just didn't give himself permission. He needs someone else to, like, can sh- to show him things, to give him permission. You know, so it's it's very interesting. Go, it's go both. I have a lot more people who are spenders than hoarders, but there are few of my clients who are also like hoarders. Like they have a lot of money, they just afraid to spend. And then I've seen that it's like it's sad when you accumulate so much wealth, and then you're like, if you die, where does the money go? So it's like it's like you're just hoarding it to give to your kids. Like you know, if you have kids, then the kids are lucky. But if you don't have kids, then where's that gonna go? Charity or whoever, you know? So yeah, yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I heard about a book. I actually haven't read it, but it's, I think it's called diet zero. Have you heard of that? Nope. And the whole idea is to spend all your money so that you die with zero. Right. Um, That's my plan. (laughs) I don't have have kids. Uh, Yeah. yeah. But I mean, that's really interesting because I I could see that because I have, um, I definitely, you know, as my money ties, I call it cheap chip, but one, my top money type is cheap chip. Like I have the tendency to not want to spend my money. I don't enjoy spending. I don't care about buying things. At least I didn't as much. And I've definitely, because I've had a successful business now, been able to, I know how to make money. So I got less scarce around it, started to spend more money, but my core, it's still like my parents are like, my my dad especially doesn't like to spend money. He likes to invest similar to that, you know? So you have to, like you said, become aware and recognize these patterns and then like, I like to step into the other money types. Like he, he went and took his friends out. That's like stepping into over generous Olivia, like becoming over generous or becoming generous around it um, to be able to kind of combat that. But I think uh, becoming aware of it. Yeah. And, and definitely you get into the game of growing your money. Like it's fun. It's kind mm-hmm. of like, you know, people say that when you get on Facebook and you get on social media, there's like all this dopamine, right. That's like hitting your mm-hmm. brain. It's like, oh my God, this is, this is addictive. This is yep. fun. And it's yep. similar once you figure out ways to make money and you see it grow, mm-hmm. it's a very different concept and different, um, just mindset shift when you're making money all your life, growing money all your life. And now you have to, you know, put on the brakes and take money out to start to see it go down mm-hmm. and your net worth go down. It's, it's, yep. you know, a lot of, I think yeah. a lot of retirees experience that because they're like, whoa, like I've been making money. And then they, that's why the number one, you know, fear is running out of money. Cause it's like, now I'm taking money out when I've been putting yeah. money in and it's a mindset yeah. for sure. But yep. yeah, that, I love that mindset stuff. And, and just about thinking of it as a relationship with money, like, are you dating? Are you married? Are you walking out the door? Are you treating your money like mm-hmm. crap? Like, like you don't pay attention to your money, you know, like if you're in a relationship, not paying attention. Um, yep, and yeah. how does that, like, if you don't pay attention to your partner, like your partner's probably not going to stick around. So if you're yeah, not exactly. your money, your yeah, money's not yeah. going to stick around. Ex- but I, exactly. I mean, I think that analogy is really, really good. Yeah. And I, yep. I used to do a lot of talk, talking about that type of stuff when I was doing money coaching as well. So um, where can they find you if anyone's listening to this and want your help and any, if you have any, anything else to add and then give us your info, where to find you. Yeah, so my uh, website is Tay. Um, you know, my full name is Christine Tay. So T E H is my last name. I know people are like, "Are you sure that's not a typo?" I said, "No, that's not a typo. They think it's da financial. It's like they think it's da financial coaching. Even at work, like they auto correct it to da. I'm like, no, it's T E H, T E H financial coaching dot com. So that's my website. So if you want to chat with me, you know, I do offer a complimentary uh chat. So it's like you can see the button to schedule everywhere on the website. So just go ahead and then chat with me. So I do you know um i do everything from like you know it's a holistic uh view so we deal with practical piece you know from budgeting um investments so i i I educate investments. I don't get investment advice. So, so then the retirement planning, we do tax planning. So everything, all of that is included. And then plus the money coaching piece, which is building your relationship with money. So I really look at everything at the holistic view. Yeah. And then I'm assuming you probably partner with financial advisors since you don't do the investment side that, and yeah. So, 
So once once in a while, um, I do have clients who come to me. They just want someone to tell them what to do with their investments. Because like a lot of my clients who come to me are the ones who actually want to learn how investments work. So when they want to learn how investments work, how the market work, then that's the price when I, I'll be a good fit. Because then I teach them how to research. I teach them how to read through the ETF and stuff like that. But then they still make the investment decisions themselves at the end of the day. So if, if the, but then if they're like, oh my God, I, I really don't want to deal with that, whatever, I'd rather just pay someone. So I do, um, I do have good friends. I refer them out to. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you so much for joining me here. And those of you listening, we'll see you next time on growing your financial business, the woman's way. Thanks again. Bye. Thank you, Robin. Are you getting all the quality prospects on your calendar that you'd like? If not, join us in the appointment generator challenge. Go to femalefinancialadvisors.com and register for free. We guarantee you'll get five quality appointments in five days if you follow this system and you can do it from online. You don't even have to pick up the phone. Whether you're just starting, whether you've been in the industry three to five years or even 30 years, this challenge will be perfect for you. Check it out, femalefinancialadvisors.com and register for absolutely free. Can't wait to see you there.